Hello, this is Daryl Castle with today's Castle Report. This is the 11th day of November in the year of our Lord, 2022. I will be talking today about the elections held last Tuesday, but primarily about one election, which I argue illustrates better than all the others, the condition of America today. I asked the question, how can this be? How can we explain this? How could this have happened? And I look for answers. Yes, that's right. I'm talking about the election of John Fetterman to the United States Senate in Pennsylvania. But first, I must remind you that yesterday, November 10th, was the 247th birthday of the U.S. Marine Corps. The birthday falling on Thursday is always good for Marines because it means that today, the 11th, is Veterans Day, and that gives Marines a four-day weekend. Some 20 million have served and are serving at the current time, so take a moment to honor one of them or their spouse and children. John Fetterman. It's very difficult to believe, but he was just elected to the United States Senate by a comfortable margin. I would never make fun of or belittle someone who has been a stroke victim and has brain damage, but neither would I want that person to fly my airliner or perform surgery on my heart. There are some jobs that require certain physical and mental skills, the absence of which eliminates one from those careers. I had to give up my dream of playing center field in Yankee Stadium and of winning the Olympic marathon because I did not have the physical ability to achieve those goals. I would submit that serving in the U.S. Senate is similar in that one should be able to talk and carry on a conversation of complete sentences to hold that office, but the people of Pennsylvania disagree. They elected by a comfortable margin a man who is so obviously unfit to hold the office that it boggles the mind. His words are incoherent ramblings which are nearly impossible to discern, but he was elected anyway. The people of Pennsylvania had the chance to witness the same debate with his opponent, Dr. Mamet Oz, that I did, and yet They concluded that they wanted that man to represent them in the Senate. It is mind-boggling that any sane person could come to such a conclusion, but despite his obvious mental shortcomings, and if he asked people to help him, he will probably show up in the Senate in January. His opponent was weak. That much is true. He accepted Trump's endorsement. Then once he had the nomination, he took it down from his website, thus giving the impression of being an opportunistic power seeker with no loyalty. He also refused to renounce his Turkish citizenship, which was undoubtedly a turnoff for many people. Turkey's a NATO member, therefore not officially an enemy, but it would be fair to say that it's at least hostile to the United States. Why then would they elect John Fetterman to the Senate? The answer is fairly obvious. That is that they wanted him in the Senate. They saw all his faults, which revealed to them his inability to perform the functions required, but they wanted him anyway. They knew he would be unable to discharge his duties, but they didn't care. The election of Fetterman proves that the election of Biden was no one-off for the Democrats. Being able to perform the duties of one's office is no longer a requirement for elected office in America. It would be interesting to hear a conversation between the two of them, Joe Biden and John Fetterman, I mean, perhaps laughing about their elections. This is rubbing our noses in it by the Democrat elite. Their goal of filling every local office with their own people and of filling the country with new Democrats is now complete enough to give them a permanent majority. They don't even have to put up a coherent candidate to win. Everybody knows and accepts the obvious conclusion that someone else or some coalition of behind-the-scenes people is actually pulling the strings and exercising power. The fact that they elected a puppet and no one as yet knows who will be pulling the strings, is apparently fine with the good people of Pennsylvania. So, not only in Pennsylvania, but around the country, what was this election about? What were all those Democrat voters voting for? They voted for and endorsed an anti-human, anti-science, pro-death, pro-impoverishment political platform and party. They endorsed the last two years of lockdowns and mandates of ruined lives and bankrupt businesses of sellouts to Big Pharma at the expense of the rest of humanity. The Democrats who were supported and elected tell us openly that when in office they will continue to do things which will make us poorer, ruin our jobs and our families. Your food will continue to cost more and more as will fuel for your car and your home heat and air. Higher prices 
are good, they tell us, because they will discipline us and encourage us to follow more closely the morality that they assign to us. Two years of life were taken from us by these people, and now instead of banishing them, we reward them. What else then? What else was elected? The release of violent criminals without bail so they may continue to commit violent crimes against innocent people. The legalization of shoplifting and of the use of dangerous drugs on the streets as well as the legalization of defecating and urinating openly in the streets, the rendering of subways and other means of public transportation dangerous and fearful places, all with the blessings of elected Democrat mayors and governors, unlimited abortion, or more properly, infanticide, similar to the ancient pagan tribes, along with the vaccine mandates for children to attend school. They voted for requiring your children to accept a completely unnecessary and very dangerous vaccine as early as age five. They voted for the continued sexual exploitation of your children with transgender and LGBTQ indoctrination in the schools you pay for. Sexual grooming, gay pornography, and other forms of perversion and indoctrination in the public schools at the earliest ages. Let's not forget energy, folks. Energy shortages, a looming diesel shortage which threatens an already fragile supply chain. Stone Age concepts disguised as progressive like wind and solar will be forced on us on our way back to the pre-industrial age. We can be comforted that we are oh so progressive in our misery and our poverty. Let's not forget the wide open southern border, the resulting invasion, this invasion results as well as third world economic status and massive increases in human trafficking and other illegal imports such as fentanyl. People continue to try to make sense of it all, whether it represents comedy or a disgrace to them. Many people just don't bother to vote anymore, concluding that it just doesn't make any difference to that end. A quote from actor James Woods, quote, if your party can't beat the actual dead, the talking dead, the walking dead, it's over. Pennsylvania Democrats elected a brain-damaged man who can barely put a coherent sentence together because he suffers from aphasia. This man cannot possibly represent his constituents responsibly, but they voted for him anyway. This tweet says it all. Do I vote for the party that nominates candidates with brain damage or the party that loses against candidates with brain damage, end quote. So we have a tattooed candidate with recent obvious brain damage running against a Muslim doctor who served in Turkey's army to maintain his Turkish citizenship, later went on to become a TV celebrity in America. Some choice, huh? The New York Times chimed in on it as well, as they are often prone to do in order to compliment Pennsylvania and question whether nationwide we had enough diversity among the candidates I would submit that all the Times really cares about is convincing the voters to share the philosophy and the prejudice of today's global ruling elite, and to the credit of Times, it appears to have been successful. Pennsylvania, such a lover of diversity, was even willing to consider the dead as viable candidates. Yes, <clears throat> in the 32nd District, diversity went to a new level of absurdity. Representative Tony DeLuca won big in his race, as reported by a business insider, quote, Pennsylvania state lawmaker won big in the midterm elections despite being dead. Representative Tony DeLuca, who died at the age of 85 on October 9th from lymphoma, crushed Green Party challenger Zara Livingston in Tuesday's midterm elections, end quote. Yes, indeed. Some effort by the third party movement. The voters actually preferred a dead person, a corpse, to your live candidate. Well, nevertheless, Zara has my sympathy. The voters in the 32nd District exercised the ultimate in diversity, choosing to elect someone to represent the most disenfranchised group in the nation, the dead. Good for Pennsylvania. You can indeed carry yourselves with pride. The old guy sitting in the town square trading pocket knives, whittling on sticks, might put it like this as they lament the old days. In the old days, politicians would come around and at least pretend they cared about us, they would promise us things like road improvements, but now they don't even bother to do that. However, the ignorance and pride of youth is convinced they have found a new path, but I'm afraid it only leads to destruction. In conclusion, folks, how can it be possible that there has been no massive repudiation of the last two years that Democrats have done, massive, perhaps irreparable damage to society with no health benefits? 
How can it be possible that a large portion of the human race actually cheered on their efforts to decimate livelihoods, destroy businesses, postpone or cancel life-saving surgeries, starve much of the world, disrupt supply chains for years in the future, destroy family relationships, force grandparents to die alone in terrible conditions, forbid you to attend their funerals? How is it possible that a majority could affirm all that? And more. Finally, folks, who says there's no good news? Certainly not the World Happiness Report, which tells us that Americans are happier than they were last year. The U.S. was ranked 19th happiest country in the world in 2021, but this year the U.S. has climbed through 16th. So progress is being made. For the fifth year in a row, Finland was the happiest country in the world, with Denmark in second place. The report focuses on how people view their own lives and concludes that the improvement was due to the opportunities for benevolence provided by the COVID pandemic. So go figure, folks. At least that's the way I see it. Till next time, this is Daryl Castle. Thanks for listening.